Hello everybody, good evening. Today I'm going to presenting my research about the case report with the title The Role of Rehabilitation Program for Patients with Right Hemiparesis and Aphasia. And let me to introduce myself. My name is Marina Indriashari and now I'm working as lecturer at Nutrition Department Binawan University Jakarta Indonesia Introduction We know about the disorder of communication following stroke are not uncommon When the stroke affects the region of the left hemisphere known as the language zone the change of having a problem with language and or speech are quite high in most right-handed individuals. The incidence of post-stroke aphasia has varied from 17% to 38%, and one-third of the stroke patients were diagnosed as aphasic. The greatest improvement was in observed during the first three months after the stroke. The present patients with severe aphasia had more severe impairment and handicap and were more dependent in ADL functions than the patients without aphasia or with mild or moderate aphasia. Now, I am going to report the case as a Mr. S. male, 14-9 year old with right handed with chief complaint weakness on the right extremities and communication disorder. From the anamnesis, the patient had weakness on his right extremities when he was arrested, had some difficulty in communication, cannot even speak at all, still could understand what other people speak by signs, symbols, gestures, and also commands. His lips were shifted to the right, no history of visual and disturbances, no history of difficulty in swallowing or getting choked while eating, no history of urine and alpha incontinentia. He had operated his heart valve disease twice, no history of hypertension, diabetic, and lipid profile. He stayed conscious. His family took him to the Chipto Mangun Kusumo Hospital. He was hospitalized for three weeks. From the examination, we found on August at 4, 2023, his blood pressure was 19 per 15 mm hemoglobin and vital signs with it normally meets. Control of postural was put in full neck control and trunk control. Sitting balance was still inadequate, but for transfer he used wheelchair. Chest expansion was poor with the right shoulder suffered subluxation with identity 2 cm. And the musculoskeletal examination found short right hemiparesi hypostasis spasticity with the UMIN signs are positive, but clonus and primitive reflexes were negative. There were perceptual and cognitive dysfunction by MMSE score S9 with apraxia, no deficit gross visual skills, and no agnosia. And his communication suffered non-fluent, good comprehension, and poor repetition. And receptive problems showed no alexia and no assemblia. And expressive problem involved anomia, agrammatica, agraphia, and acalculia. And there was paresis, a nerve of 7 and 12 dextra central. The problem of this patient, main problem set as post CVD stroke ischemic with right hemiparesis, paresi nerves of 7, 12, dextra central, and aphasia broca. Etiology of this problem was thrombosis occlusion in medical cerebral artery branch on the left cortex cerebral. Some rehabilitation program have done and physical therapy for improving strength 
and range of motion upper and lower extremities dextra by passively exercise balance training and training for transfer of the body gradually giving patient the breathing exercise with chest expansion exercise by doing the upper extremities range of motion exercise especially after doing the exercise speech therapy to learn talking by other methods of communicating by symbols or signs visual stimulates by gesture and color auditory stimulates by listening classical music and extensive exercise with patients require follow direction and repeat what they hear discussion stroke is one of the most common causes of disability decay treatments for promoting behavioral recovery in motor language and cognitive domains after stroke are themselves behavioral treatments loosely grouped under the headings physiotherapy occupational therapy speech and language therapy and neuropsychology that we can consider inputs into the brain for example significantly higher doses of good quality upper limb rehabilitation and chronic stroke the early post-stroke phase is described as a period of spontaneous biological recovery and spontaneous biological recovery is behavioral response to underlying biological events that occur in the first weeks and months after stroke caused by increased post-stroke plasticity mechanisms. Recovery is rapid, occurs at the level of damage, and is general beyond the tasks used in post-stroke training, which differs from the improvements seen in the chronic phase of stroke. And this poses two major challenges in the field of stroke rehabilitation are the first is to determine the appropriate form of behavioral training to take advantage of this critical period and the second challenge is how to exploit biological mechanisms of post-stroke plasticity to enhance or prolong the effects of behavioral training in post-stroke patients Hemiparesis is a condition when one side of the body experiences weakness so that movement is limited. It's contralateral, meaning the weakness occurs on the side of the body opposite to the side of the brain that is damaged. Infrared therapy is given more to hemiparesis patients because this therapy can increase metabolic processes by increasing temperature. The metabolic process becomes better because vasodilatation of blood vessels occurs so that increases circulation. The delivery of nutrients and oxygen to the tissue will be increased. Rehabilitation program can reduce pain, relax superficial muscle spasms, and increase blood flow in the area where the program is given. Post-stroke medical rehabilitation is an integrated effort involving various medical disciplines and is a collection of programs that include training, use of modalities, equipment, and also medicines. The goal of treatment is to progress towards successful real-life communication that in turns to maximizing the patient's functional abilities. Family involvement is often a crucial component of aphasia treatment so that family. And the finally of my presentation is a conclusion. The rehabilitation for aphasia seeks to improve an individual's ability to communicate it to be helping the persons to use their remaining abilities, restore as much language as possible to compensate for language problems, and learn other methods of communication. Education about the underlying disease and the management must be given to prevent recurrent alter patient is able doing activity daily livings independently. He won't achieve complete motor recovery. 
and thank you for your attention in all in it's all of my presentation and i hope you can get the benefit of it thank you bye